Hi, I'm Rob from Hobbs. Inc. Thanks for joining me for another video beer review. This time, you can't quite see, I've got a table in front of me. Three beers from a brand new brewery. So I'll show you, I guess, the big one. Called Steelfish Brew Co. Please check them out on Instagram, um, Steelfish Brew Co. On Instagram, check them out. Uh, yeah, so big thanks to my mate Simon, who's a, a very talented home brewer, a friend of mine, friend of the channel, um, um, who kindly sent me these. Um, so it's a little uh, project that he's, he's started up. So what I understand the concept of this is, is essentially, I think, from what I've been told, he brewed an Imperial Stout. So this is 10.1. And from the runnings of that bigger beer, which is a good idea, he made two more beers. One which he calls Dark and Hoppy, which is 4.8, which is, is, I'll get into that when I get to it. And then I guess the initial one, where you'd, I guess you'd call it, in a lot of senses, you'd call it a small beer. For example, where um, Anchor make, uh, um, Old Foghorn, they make their small beer. From uh, from the um, from the second runnings, probably maybe third runnings, or the later runnings of the uh, of the work from that beer. So big thanks, Simon, for sending me these over. I thought I was paying for them, and then he, he very graciously sent me them. So first one we're going to be taking a look at is this Dark Mile, two point one percent ABV. I'm sure there's loads of text on here, which is too small for me to read. Oh, yeah, the beer is produced during the brewing of our Imperial Stout. Boom, taking third runnings. Off um, the mash producer dark with blah 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 this is something about Temperance Street Brewery, I think it said something. Not a brewery I'm not aware of. But yeah, so using someone else's kit for his own um, kind of brewing projects. It's not his full time job. Um, beer in the glass, I mean, that's, it's not, it's, I guess a dark brown. You can see a bit more of a brownie tinge towards the bottom. A bit, a bit, of, a bit of fizz to it, a newspaper kind of coloured head aroma. Let's check it out. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, cola cubes, a bit of coal as well, a bit of kind of like carbon note, maybe a bit of fruit cake, raisins, a bit of chocolate, yeah, maybe certain kind of salinity, a certain kind of like, maybe oats in there, there's a certain kind of that minerality you get from oats, so let's dive in, cheers. Yeah, very nice. I mean, Simon was a, a very accomplished home brewer. I mean, big part of a, I think a local. Ooh, <laughs> there is other glasses down here. <laughs> uh, part of a good homebrew group in Manchester. Mm. Yeah, that's nice. Getting a, um, a bit of bonfire toffee, maybe a bit of dandelion and burdock, brown bread, without a doubt. Nice and clean, crisp as well at the back end. Maybe a, a burnt, kind of slightly nutty character. Walnut, maybe. Yeah, it's nice. Mm -mm -mm. I like a mild. And that is a very pleasant one. Next one up is it says Dark and Hoppy. This is on the back of the can. See, in this, this lighting, my eyes fail. This is Black IPA, Cascadian, or um, Dark, or Hoppy Porter. You decide. This beer is produced by the second runnings. Uh, sessionable beer with um, full body Chinook Equinot Cascade. Yep, cool. So he's done this one in a can, which is interesting. Don't know how he's managed, I don't know what this, this other brewery is, and then having the facilities do a small can, batch canning, and then um, bottles as well. It's usually one, one up to the. So I'm going to this one. Bit darker, so this time as you expect. So it's second runnings, so still, uh, uh, still a lot more of that kind of like um, malt in the wort. So you're still dragging out the colour uh, as well as everything else, the sweetness and um, the potential bitterness from those dark malts. Just a lot more of the malt character. A brief head again. Appearance-wise, it's just that little bit darker, I guess. 
So as well, check out the aroma. Ooh, yeah. I mean, for a little beer, 4.8. Yeah, that's got a really nice, bright hop character. Quite kind of, it's a combination of lemon, grapefruit, but then for me, when certain hops and malts, Greek dark malts and hops, you get more of a berry character, and I'm getting um, a bit of kind of blackberry, maybe a hint, hint of elderberry. But yeah, let's dive in. Cheers. Straight away, you know, there's oh, that's nice. Um, you know, there's a lot more malt character in there for in, in every way. I mean, that's yeah, <laughs> a bit more burnt, I guess, than the last one. A fuller, more, a bit more chocolate, he hedging towards um, coffee. Then that, co that combination of those kind of like malts once again, S slightly kind of. Not in a bad way, but slightly soapy combination maybe because it's those dark malt and those citrus hops. So you're getting that kind of lemon and dark, uh, lemon and um, from the hops and the, uh, the dark malt as this kind of like, as I said, not in a bad way at all. And then you get bitterness from those dark malts, bitter chocolate, once again, bonfire toffee, burnt sugar, maybe more than bonfire toffee. It's got a bit further because it's going a bit more, a bit more bitter dry and then um i said i don't see that, 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 that berry but i'd say the malts are a little bit more probably those kind of like probably roasted barley i'd say yeah that kind of acrid kind of quality but then a lovely kind of vibrancy from those hops very nice lovely combination so far next one this is the big one this is why the beer was brewed uh, i guess all these beers were brewed was the brewing of this imperial stout so say about this full decadent bodied uh, a decadent full bodied strong beer with <coughs> chocolate coffee blah de blah I'll pass them off as my own one to savour and enjoy there you go so he's got a website so yeah so twitter it's um, steelfish brew co Cap, caps for steel brew and co and then um, oh instagram it's steel underscore steelfish underscore brewing apparently I don't think it was that one I looked anyway, but yeah, that's what it says on there. And the QR code for un untapped as well. Maybe I'll do that later, Simon, if I remember. <laughs> but yeah. Ooh, yeah. Well, sound, look, good start. As you can see, it well, you could hear it glugged out of the glass. I mean, glugged out of the bottle. Lovely pitch black. Kind of opaque, shiny, ebony beer. There is a little bit of head, a bit of a ring of a swell. Lots of alcohol legs on it. Yeah, there you go. There's a little bit of a thin, a thin film of kind of like dark chocolate head. So aroma. Mmm. Ooh. Yeah. For me, it leads with licorice. Um. Christmas cake, so like a, a really rich, boozy um, fruit cake. Treacle, black, I mean molasses, black treacle. Once again, that kind of like burnt, kind of carbon note of um, those that kind of roasted barley. Ooh, it smells good though. Once again, I'd say there's a kind of a minerality to it. I think, I'm thinking maybe that's maybe it's oat. I used to used to be a oatmeal stout from Wensleydale Brewery. I used to buy, um, and that had that kind of like character from the earth, it's kind of like whetstone. Yeah. Oh, that smells great. Let's dive in. Cheers. Thanks, Simon. Mmm. As soon as that hits your lips. Yep. Yep. Mmm. You just can't, you, that just, it sets you up for, from the start. That's really well balanced. It's got, yeah, that's <laughs> that's good. Um, yeah, that's got that's got everything that you'd <laughs> you'd want from it. From a, like a really traditional British Russian Imperial Stout, and look back to those kind of historical ones like Harvey's, but not with the kind of weird Brady thing. But um, 
like Curry's Russian Imperial Stout. It's that kind of beer for me. Like I said, thick, slightly slick, body to it. Loads of dried fruit, prunes, bit of brown sugar, molasses, licorice. Once again, that kind of like big, earthy fruity cake, fruit cake. Mm. But then they're lovely kind of, yeah, as I said, that more kind of figs, prunes, but kind of fresh because it's it, it, has a, it has a light vibrance to it. But it is kind of earthy and kind of, it's leather bound books and, you know, and it's, it's, it's a really rich Imperial Stout. I think he's doing a cracking job. I mean, and I'd often be like, oh, mm, are we going to get that cherry in this? No. No, he's done a really, as far as straight up, old trad Imperial Stout. That's a very nice one. And I'm not just saying that because he gave me him for free and he's a friend. But no, that's a great beer. And you can see the lineage between the others because the other ones are really enjoyable and drinkable in their own right. But you can see the reason why this was created was for the brewing of Steelfish's first batch. I mean, I think subsequently they've done um, some uh, more releases, uh, primarily cask, I think. Some more pale stuff, lagers, and maybe he's done lager. He's definitely done a pale ale. Maybe he's done something a bit wheaty as well. But you I mean you can see why he's made the effort to make that beer because it's just, yeah, that's absolutely cracking. So yeah, as I said, Imperial Stout at ten point one, the copy dark one at four point eight from the second runnings, and then from the third runnings, the dark mile at two point one. So yes, as I said, check these guys out online. Um, on Twitter and Instagram. I've already told you them, you don't need them again. But yeah, lovely stuff. So yeah, check out Steelfish. Because I think there's going to be some really good stuff. This is, these are his first package beers. He's done a cracking job. Anyway, I'm Rob from Hop Team. See you next time. Cheers.